Okay, well, here I am set up to uh, try to remove this uh, bubble level out of here. The bubble level will likely be destroyed if it comes out at all. And let's hope I don't hurt myself. And other than maybe a little bit of a, of a cut on my fingers where it slid through, the bubble level is out. Oh, well. If you don't bleed on a project, uh, I don't think you're actually working on it. All right, so let's see. Yeah, that uh, that came out. Although I think there's still some epoxy on the back side. Um, let's see. Well, uh, we can. I'm not sure how I could get that epoxy off. Maybe I can. Uh, uh, maybe I can uh, use some use a chisel or something on it. Um, all right, get these C clamps off. Flip it over. As you can see. Show you show the show you the epoxy. See the epoxy and uh, where the bubble level used to be, that large hole right there. So we're going to try to hopefully get some of this uh, get some of this epoxy off. And I'm not sure how I can do that. Uh, these things. Put these back on on the other side. And of course, they gotta go this way. Probably, probably can only use one because I'm gonna be striking the chisel coming this way, and I don't want one over here to be in my way, but I can clamp it over on this side. Let me do that. That way I'll get a, it's just basically some way to put some extra pressure. Whoops, there's, <laughs> there's one of the problems with this uh, workbench is that there's random holes everywhere. <laughs> Alright, okay. Alright, that's secure. And uh, put this uh, makeshift thing back. Place and close that up. All right. Uh, let's see. Chisel. Get another dangerous tool. Got way too many, I guess. Uh, probably this medium-sized one. Technically, these are wood chisels, but uh, it'll be all right for this, I think. Just put it flat. Got some of it. Get on this other side. more of it. Probably making all you woodworkers out there cringe because I'm using this uh, wood chisel, but you know what? You gotta work with what you have. And, uh, you know, worst case scenario, I can just buy more. At least, in theory, I can. Alright, most of this is off. 
There's, I got a little bit right here. pretty but uh, I think the majority of it's off <laughs> ow that hurt whoa <laughs> care of that I got a got a piece uh caught myself on a piece of metal that I thought was epoxy so uh take care of that all right I'll back at it got myself taped up <laughs> shoot <laughs> oh yeah you know this is the kind of stuff you get whenever you're doing this kind of thing is you get injured Pounded down, whatever that was. I'm pretty sure it's just a chunk of metal. I just want to get this. That's uh, I think that's good. Maybe not too good for my chisel, but uh, well, we'll break out something to hone it at a, some later point. I like I do woodworking with these things anyhow. We'll uh, set this down over here. Hopefully, won't need it anymore. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if you can notice, but I uh, got a little bit of my shop cleaned up. <laughs> I mean, some of it. I mean, I can walk around a little bit more now, I guess. Uh, still don't have this. I got a, this, yeah, I don't like thinking about that much. But, uh, yeah, eventually I'm going to get there. I know I am. All right. Yeah, okay. I don't know what I can do with that hole, but maybe we can put something in it later. Okay, so I'm just finishing up mounting my uh, angle brackets here for the uh, for the motors, and uh, I haven't put this thing completely back together because it's not needed for the uh, for the alignment um, of where I'm going to put the uh, where I'm going to put the uh, bearing blocks and whatnot. But uh, I do need them kind of tightened down, so I just put it back. The only thing that is missing is the bottom bar, but it's not really needed right now. So I'm take this and make some noise, and we're gonna get our motors here. And I got these motors, and uh, I positioned the uh, shaft collars on them, one and a quarter inches down, and. Just like they should, and then I've got the uh, the bolt here that uh, will that will uh, position everything, and uh, we're just gonna just gonna mount it just like this, or I uh, should say, yeah, this one's got to be. Yeah, we're gonna have to essentially take the measurement. 
off of one thing and at least the at least the height on one. And because uh, the motor's gonna be oops, not like not quite like that. What am I doing, Andrew? Get, get myself get myself a little bit confused. Motors aren't going to be sticking out the back like that. They're going to be tucked underneath, and I'm just it's going to be like this. Put that like that. Run the nut up on it, and, uh, and just give this a little bit of a tightening down. And position it something like that. Now, one thing you'll you know, one thing you may may or may not have noticed is both of these motors, got this one here and this one here, they both have the shaft on the same side. Now I'm going to cover that in a little bit. I'm I'm going to probably you know, probably by the time the way this is going to be laid out, I'm not sure. You know, I might have this shaft uh, switched over, but uh, that's going to be there's going to be a little part of the. Uh, uh, of this video that'll show show how to uh, swap that shaft over but uh, for right now um, it's going to be like this and I'm just going to have to take uh, take the uh, measurement off of this one transfer it over on the other side but it'll essentially kind of you know basically look look like the same thing like this with the connector over here um, but the shaft will be coming this way so uh, you know, just in case, just in case you're kind of confused about that, I just haven't uh, haven't done these motors up yet. So, what I need to do is I need to uh, I need to get I need to get out uh, I need to get out a uh, a small a small level so I can I can probably just eyeball it. Why not? Doesn't again, this stuff doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be close. So that really looks like it's about. Uh, it really looks like it's uh, probably, probably. Uh, what would I want to call it? Probably, probably at the proper at right angles to the thing. And I could certainly check this a little bit. Maybe let's see what we can do. Just like this. You know, it would be nice if uh, if that uh, shaft collar wasn't there, <laughs> but uh, I think for uh, I think for eyeballing it, it really that's uh, that's pretty darn close. So uh, yeah, just uh, just to uh, get an idea of how how high up this is, it looks like it's a uh, well, it looks like it's uh, about uh, uh, two inches on center. So I just need to make a, I just need to make the bearing block to be about uh, two and a half, two and three quarters inches, something like that. Uh, about two and a half inches uh, tall from from here, and uh, you know, just kind of like uh, looking at things. Probably uh, probably get away with uh, probably three inches wide. So three three inches wide and two inches tall. Just gotta mark that out on uh, on this uh, on this piece of cutting board. Uh, high density polyethylene HDPE. That's what this is. It's uh, I'm not sure what the thickness is. I think it's uh, I think it's like uh, well it's probably metric. <laughs> if I, uh, yeah, it's about a centimeter. It's about a centimeter wide. Uh, with that uh, in uh, in uh, American dumb units uh, about three eighths of an inch. Something like that. So uh, we'll uh, get that. Uh, we'll get that laid out and uh, get this. Uh, get this cut out, and uh, then we'll uh, then we'll go from there. Got my uh, board material here. Laid out a line to give me. Well, hopefully, I'm just wanting to get rid of this uh, rounded edge thing here. Give me uh, something of a more square shape. And put a piece of uh, aluminum here, uh, left over from cutting that other, cutting those other sheets, those sheets there. And uh, I'm going to use that as kind of a, a saw guide. The nice thing about uh, the nice thing about uh, 
cutting board material or HDP is that it cuts basically kind of like wood or at least uh, that's been my experience with it uh, with other uh, with other forms of it um, so it's very easy to cut very easy to work with material and uh, you can just you can just uh, you can just work with it with normal you know basic basic uh, you know basic woodworking tools um, doesn't need anything uh, anything uh, super special or uh, you know any kind of uh, special machining tools or anything like that just uh, just your basic uh, woodworking tools work well enough and uh, just going to clamp this I might have to I might have to uh, remove the clamp at the very end of the cut I don't think I have enough room for that's all right by the time we're at the end of the cut everything else is pretty much square anyhow Yeah, make sure I'm missing the, missing the holes that are in this uh, in this workbench. All right, so that should be uh, well clamped in place, and uh, let's just uh, get this uh, thing started and go for it. So yeah, it just basically cuts like wood. Maybe a little bit easier because uh, because it's uh, kind of almost uh, self lubricating. But you don't want to uh, you don't want to you know you got to use uh, if you're using like power tools or anything you got to use a proper blade and whatnot uh, because otherwise if it goes too fast. Or you don't have uh, enough teeth on the blade and whatnot, and sometimes you even have to lubricate the cut. It'll actually melt back, and uh, as you cut through, and uh, leave you with a. Uh, sometimes even it'll even uh, stick the blade and kick it back. So I just try to always usually work with it with uh, regular hand tools because you know the heat. There won't be any heat buildup or anything like that. this cut up and there we go so now we have a fairly maybe not a perfect edge but fairly good edge and uh, you know, so we can uh, we can uh, work work with this from here. Uh, so I'm gonna lay out my lines, and uh, then I'll be right back. All right, so I've laid out my line here at uh, two and three quarter inches. Um, probably not too easy to see, but uh, got my line here, and uh, that two and three quarter inches. That's gonna that's the height of the uh, of the of the bearing blocks. Um, if you recall, the shaft was at two inches, so that gives me a three quarter inches of, uh, of extra room. I'm going to have to drill out the holes at uh, two inches, of course, and uh, you know that'll that'll just give me a little bit of extra plastic for support. Um, probably could have went to two and a half, but you know two and three quarter just seemed a little bit safer. wasn't that big of a deal. Could have even went to three if I wanted to. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to cut this piece off and then uh, continue to lay this out and uh, be right back. Okay, so here we have our uh, first initial block, uh, at least the uh, start of it. 
and essentially uh, cut it down to uh, two and three quarter, or not two and three quarter, basically three inches. I might just uh, say, you know, cut it in half would be the simplest. And uh, then uh, another thing we're going to do is uh, clean up this, uh, this rough edge and whatnot. Uh, with uh, with the sanding block here, my old sanding block. Um, clean it up and uh, then uh, cut this uh, cut this other piece, and then we'll have to uh, drill out the holes. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we have uh, we have our piece uh, piece here marked in half, and uh, it's a uh, it's about three and an eighth inch uh, wide on each end. Um, Cut it down this, uh, cut it down this line, and uh, then clean up the bits, and then we can work from there to uh, figure out, uh, measure off, and uh, drill out our holes for the, for the uh, shaft itself. And we're also going to have to, uh, we're also going to have to drill some holes, a couple on, uh, on the very end, so we can mount it, so we can mount it, yeah, so we can mount it to the, uh, to the frame. <laughs> Just uh yeah, just looking at things here. Mount it to the frame, and uh, you know we'll be uh, using some machine screws to go in from the bottom of the frame, or from the top of the frame down into into uh, into the plastic here. So um, that means we'll also have to uh, draw the frame first. So uh, let me uh, let me go ahead and uh, get this cut, and then we'll go from there. So I now have my two pieces. Now what I got to do is uh, basically uh, find the find the center, cross here, and down, and uh, then measure up two inches, and that'll be my uh, point for drilling the hole for the uh, shaft. So I'm going to get that done. So here I have my two pieces marked. I don't know if you can see those little dots, but uh, that's uh, right at two inches from this bottom or the bottom on the on the screen up to the uh, up to the top to uh, that's where the shafts will go through so I'm gonna drill these out now one thing I wanted to uh, mention is uh, um, cutting board or HDP I should just say high density polyethylene it is one of those things that is virtually impossible to glue um, so if you ever want to glue this stuff don't even try it's Unless you have this one particular adhesive that 3M makes that is not cheap at all to buy, um, you're not gonna you're not gonna probably get very far. However, from what I understand, now I've never tried it, you can you can you can weld this stuff. Uh, you know you can uh, you can essentially melt it together, and uh, that's uh, you know that's uh, you know something that uh, can be done with it. The other, the other way is mechanical fasteners, which is what I'm going to use here because I have to because it's going to be attached to metal. And uh, so I'm, uh, you know, I just wanted to uh, mention that because uh, you might try, you know, super glue or epoxy or stuff like that. So stuff don't stick. It's a very, very uh, interesting substance, uh, high density polyethylene. It doesn't want things stuck to it, which makes it one of its uh, great properties. You know, it's why we use it for cutting boards and all kinds of other uh, all kinds of other things is uh, you know it's it's just a great material in, in that way <laughs> so I'm gonna get to uh, drilling this out all right so I'm gonna be using a combination of tools to uh, drill these out first off uh, I need to know well how big is my shaft <laughs> um, big hey baby I have this uh, this uh, drill this uh, drill template this uh, sizing template very handy thing to have around the shop for whenever you want to know how big a bolt is or uh, if you have an unknown uh, drill that you need to know how big uh, how big uh, the uh, you know how big the drill is um, you know so you can match the drills to your screws or whatever well you know this ha goes up to a uh, half inch um, small size is one sixteenth I believe and goes up to a half inch and uh, you know, so, and it also has a metric equivalence on the other side. Um, basically, I can just uh, fit this over whichever hole I want. And, you know, basically, you know, this side, well, obviously too small. This one's still too small, too small, too, well, that one kind of fits. But 
kind of hard, kind of not to, and I don't want the shaft binding up in, in the thing. However, this one fits just perfectly. And that one right here, I don't know, kind of show it. You can see it's uh, 15 30 seconds of an inch. Um, or the opposite side says, if I can find it here, there we go. The opposite side says 11.9 um, millimeters. So almost 12 millimeters. Um, so I know that I need to use a drill that size to, to drill a hole through that the shaft will go through. But uh, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill with this quarter inch bit that we've been using to drill everything else. Uh, drill straight through it. And uh, I'm going to use, I'm going to use uh, my, my guide here so that I know that the hole going through, at least this what I'm calling a pilot hole, goes all the way through properly and is pretty much straight. And uh, then once I have that, then I'm going to switch over to a step drill that I have right here. And a little step drill. And I'm just going to drill the remainder of the way up until the uh, next to the last step, which is conveniently enough 15 30 seconds so I'm gonna get that going and uh, put this down get our uh, get our thing oh and one of the first things I got to do if I can locate it right here is I'm going to center punch my hole so that uh, my bit doesn't wander off always a good thing to do Especially whenever you're dealing with uh, stuff that is as slick as uh, HDPE. Get my cord. And then put that there. Looks good. Select my quarter inch here. Line it on the hole. Line that. That good. And there we go, and we got our quote-unquote pilot hole. So uh, now all I have to do is uh, switch over to my, to my step bit. And I won't need that anymore. Put that down there. Get this uh, step bit in place. Yeah, it kind of... Uh, I kind of miss my skin here <laughs> from injuring myself. It's just, uh, you know, old school, uh, old school drill check doesn't spin very well for with your with a band aid on. So now we're going to uh, just use a step drill to enlarge everything. Got a lot of swarf here, a lot of plastic swarf. Might have to come back from the other side. In fact, I know I'm gonna have to go back from the other side, but that's not a big deal. Just take this, flip it over. Because this material is a little bit thick, and uh, just the way the step, step bit is, I don't wanna go to the next side. All right, that should be pretty good right there. And uh, take it, take our motor. Let's see what happens here. Haven't done this. And yeah, fits fits relatively well. Oh, well, all right. Guess I need to go up one more size. So I'll just run that step step bit all the way through. I'll be all right. I think the next size up, I'm not sure on that step bit. Well, it's half inch it says. Sometimes, you know, this is the way things go. I'm doing real work here. So. Like that. Let's 
see how that fits. If this doesn't fit, then we're going to have to break out an actual drill, an actual half inch, and uh, ream it out. Oh, that fits perfectly. That's exactly what I want, just like that. Now what that kind of shows me now is that I don't need to really do the pilot hole. I can just use my step dr drill all the way through, and I can do that with the next one. This is supposed to be just a loose fit. Basically, what's going to happen is, is that the wheel is going to fit over on here, and obviously this is going to be somewhere, somewhere like this on the back side, and um, it'll provide a it'll provide a bearing a bearing surface for the weight of the wheel and the and everything else that's on it. Instead of transmitting that weight and everything to the bearings, what you could call a bearing, it's actually a plastic sleeve if I remember right, inside this uh, gearbox which would give premature wear and everything and it's something you should do when you're building a robot or whatnot if you can um you know unless the robots are really lightweight um take that uh, don't don't put the don't put the uh weight of the robot on the bearings of the of the motor itself or the gear motor unless that gear motor is designed to take that kind of a load most aren't so um you know unless it has some special radial bearings or something to take that load uh take it off yourself and use some other kind of bearing um, in order to support the weight of the robot and just use the motor to transmit the force to the wheel. Um, so we're going to do that and then, uh, then we'll have to drill out the frame so that we can locate the screw holes for this and just go from there. <laughs> okay, so this isn't attached yet, but I kind of wanted to show you what it's going to kind of look like. I've got a motor here attached to the bracket and then I've got the uh, block that I just drilled just sitting right here with the shaft sticking out and the wheel's gonna be right here and uh, what I got to do is I've got to measure out uh, you know basically measure on this block where I want uh, the screw holes to be and transfer their uh, transfer the uh, hole positions onto the frame and then drill the frame out for those hole positions um, I got to do that for both sides uh, so um, you know, so that's uh, you know, that's just something. Just kind of wanted to give you an idea of what this uh, what this is ultimately going to look like. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna get to uh, get to uh, getting that done, and uh, work from there. All right. Okay. So as I mentioned before, both of these motors have their shafts coming out on the same side. And one of them, I need one of them to be flipped around to point in the opposite direction so that they both can essentially essentially face the, face different directions but have their bodies in the proper positions against, uh, you know, just on the frame. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to flip that around and then one other modification that I'm going to, that I'm going to show, real simple, is... Right there in the end, I don't know, let me put this down. Right here on this connector, you might be able to see those two pins there, right there? Yeah, there you can see it. Um, those pins, we're going to uh, twist them slightly. And the reason we're going to do that is because, well, you can buy a connector for this uh, particular motor that's uh, made by, it's a particular AC Delco connector. And, um, I don't have one of those, and you can you can pick it up at AutoZone or whatnot, um, or you can you know if you actually remove one of these from a seat, you know, or any other kind of motor that's like this, just be sure to get the connector and the wires and everything because uh, then you won't have to do any uh, any modifications to the motor. Otherwise, uh, you know, basically just some simple uh, quarter inch uh, um, spade lug connectors can fit right in onto there, but because they're so close together. It makes it a little bit tight, so if you rotate them just slightly at an angle, you can then get the connectors on very easily. And then once you have the connectors on, the other thing you know, the other thing you could do is you could cut the shroud off and uh, give you a little bit more room. But I want to keep it on because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to probably fill this area once I get the connectors on, fill the area with uh, hot glue or silicone or something like that. So it'd give it a little bit more uh, weather protection and whatnot um, from outdoors and such. So uh, that's something I'll do in a, you know at a later point. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, show you how to um, how to how to flip this over. So uh, 
let's do it. So the screws on this motor right here that are holding that are holding this uh, cover and the shaft in place, they are actually uh, Torx bits, and they're T they're T25 size, uh, fairly common uh, size, and uh, you know just something to keep in mind. That's uh, what we got to uh, what we got to do is we just got to take this and remove those screws. So uh, very easy to do. And I use uh, got this uh, long screwdriver uh, combination screwdriver type thing here. Just makes it easier because of this uh, long shaft being in the way. So, uh, all right. Okay, so now those loosened up. Take them out carefully. Don't lose them. <laughs> and you can see the cover has uh, come loose. There's three and four. Now set these right here. And then Something to keep in mind, there is grease inside this motor, um, you know, so, you know, just be aware of that, you know, and wherever you sit things down, you know, you know, put it on, you know, have a rag or, or something you can set it down on if you don't want grease getting everywhere. And, you know, have a rag handy for your hands uh, if, that's a, if that's a thing. This just comes off like this. Got the uh, cover here. And the covers can only be oriented in one direction, so you don't have to worry about that. And then the shaft, it can just be pulled out like that. And you can see there's, you know, you can see the grease that's on the gear. I'm not sure what kind of grease that is, but uh, don't wipe it off or anything. There's no need to, unless it's, a, you know, unless it's in really bad shape. And this cover comes off like that. And uh, you know, here's the you know here's the motor and everything else. You can kind of see the worm gear a little bit, not too much, but a little bit. And all you have to do is I got to put it on the opposite side. So I'll just uh, position it in place. Like I said, it won't go one way. Hold it in place, and take the shaft, put it back in, get the other cover. Just got some grease on me. It'll happen. Don't worry about it. It's not gonna hurt you All right And now the shaft is flipped and we can just uh, put these uh, put these screws back in place and uh, You know let me uh, let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back in a second and I'll show you what it looks like All right, so here we have the motor with the shaft uh, flipped over and you can see how see how they're uh, now symmetrical and opposite. That's what we want. We want uh, two pairs. One that's a right hand motor and one that's a left hand motor. And what I'm going to do to kind of show you as far as the, the angling of the uh, of of the terminals on the on the motor, because I already have this one done, is uh, you can see. If I can get it there, see how they're kind of see how they're angled at about a 45 degree angle versus the original. You can see that they're uh, essentially straight. So uh, we'll uh, just uh, do that, and that's a very a very simple thing to do. All we have to do. And I'm just uh, looking at things here. See what I want to do here exactly. All right, uh, yeah. Okay, so all we have to do is basically get a pair of needle nose pliers and just go in there and carefully grasp the terminal and rotate it just a little bit. Just a little bit. And you might have to fiddle with this with some actual terminals, but you don't have to do it too much. Kind
kind of get them, uh, kind of get them, try to get them at the same angle if you can. And uh, that's all I'm going to do right there. So uh, here it is. So you can see now that uh, I can get it there. You can see now that they're at a that they're at a that they're at the angle that I need, and uh, that'll make uh, that'll make it easier to uh, slip on the terminals. You know, I'm just going to be using uh, you know something like I got a couple different kinds of terminals. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use. Probably these. Just a little, uh, like I said, you know, just a little uh, spade lug. Uh, I'm not sure what what they're really called, but yeah, they're just these little terminals. Or you might be, uh, you might also be familiar, you know, with uh, these as well. Um, you know, same kind of same kind of deal, but uninsulated. So uh, you know, just uh, some crimp connectors. Put some wires in there, crimp them down, put them in there, and then, like I said, what I'm going to do is. Uh, um, Put some, uh, you know, hot glue or silicone or something like that inside inside the connector to uh, to weatherproof it and everything. So that's basically all I have to do in order to get these, uh, you know, get these uh, all uh, situated. And I had to do that because I'm going to be putting these on both sides of the of, of the frame and positioning positioning the uh, bearing blocks so that I can mark things and. You know, because this thing's like fabricated, not precision machined or anything like that. Um, different, you know, certain, you know, there's parts, you know, you, you kind of just want to, you, 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 I guess what I want to say is that some parts may be different from one side to the next or whatnot, you know, just because of slight differences um, in, in this uh, whole, uh, I guess, fabrication process. So um, try to make it, we try to, you know, we try to make it as, as, accurate as possible but uh you know things creep in and uh so it's best to um it's best to uh take care of that and keep that in mind so we're gonna go ahead and uh, do that and uh I'll be right back okay so i ended up uh taking these uh bearing blocks and uh marked out onto the bottom where the uh you know, basically where the uh, holes are going to be as far as laterally, both sides on both the right and the left. And I also marked one's left, other's right, just in case, you know, so they don't get mixed up because, again, whole fabrication differences and parts and everything. Um, and so did those and then transferred the, uh, transferred the marks across by having the motors set up and then putting them on and then using a uh, white, what's called white china marker. Just, uh, it's kind of like a grease pencil more than anything else. Just, uh, it's called a china marker. It's uh, got this uh, weird way of, you unwrap it. It's like got paper and you unwrap it and then you can sharpen it. It's kind of an odd little pencil thing, but it works, works well. It's white. I don't know if they make other colors, I always use a uh, black sharpie for light stuff, and this white china marker for uh, dark stuff. Um, when I'm marking uh, marking metal, um, so I just mark. You can see it right, well, right there on that side, and right there on that side. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to center punch these holes, where the holes are to go, and then. Uh, and then drill them out. So uh, drill them out with a uh, not sure what size drill, but uh, drill them out with uh, whatever drill is gonna. I haven't chosen the screws yet exactly. But whatever uh, drill will handle those screws. And then we can uh, transfer the marks over or transfer the holes over to the uh, bottom of this and drill these out and then screw them down and they should be good, hopefully. Best laid plans of mice and men, you know. And 
this from here. All right. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get a drill and drill these out. And then I'll be right back. All right. So I've drilled all the holes on uh, this side over here. Got two out of the three over here, and I'm just going to finish up this third one. That's basically takes care of it. Get this uh, scarf and whatnot off here. And all we got to do is take our rag and wipe off the uh, excess oil. I just use oil as a uh, like some three-in-one oil as a cheap cutting fluid. I have some regular cutting fluid in there. Actually, a big, big pint or something of uh, Tap Magic, but I have yet to try it. Maybe I'll get around to it one of these days. <laughs> so, uh, so now so now we uh, have this uh, have this drilled out. We can move on to drilling the uh, drilling the plastic pieces. Those are the bearing blocks. But uh, here's the uh, here's the holes. You can sort of kind of see them. There you go. Get get some get some of that reflected light down there. So we got those, and we can put our bearing blocks in place and. Uh, drill those out so that's what i'm going to uh going to do next so because of the way these are uh, situated these bearing blocks remember this is the bottom here and the other side the top has the uh, has the lip what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to first drill the center hole out on this and then mount the blocks in the position where they're supposed to be using just the center hole and then use these as guides to drill the other two holes and um and then that way everything will be aligned up properly so that's what i'm going to end up doing i'm going to first drill those drill those uh center holes first and that's what I've got uh, all set up right here for uh, this side. Uh, I think it's yeah, it's the right right hand side on this one. Left hand side is waiting. So I'm gonna get that done. And be right back. Okay, so now we have both uh, left and right. Well, this is right and this is left. Both of them drilled out. And uh, now we're gonna just mount them to the uh, center holes on the frame. Drill the other holes out. All right, so uh, we got this uh, got this first one mounted, the left hand one. This is front, left hand side. Got the left hand side mounted. Just gonna. Well, it looks like I'm gonna. Looks like I uh, can't drill this out completely. I'll only be able to mark the holes because uh, the length of my drill bit isn't long enough to clear the depth I need for the, the side frame thing, but that's okay. We can just uh, pull it out and drill it like we did the others. Do this one over here. That's all we need to do there. Now we can go ahead and remove this. The nice thing about HDPE is you can drill it just so far and then uh, 
the hole I drilled for this uh, center hole was nowhere near the depth of these screws. And I used an eighth inch, an eighth inch uh, bit drill, but it just kind of like sinks right in and uh, forms its own threads and everything. It's like I said, it's just like working with wood, except uh, I guess in a way it's even better. All right, so uh, I don't know if you can uh, see this, but uh, you can see the divots that were made, and they're pretty much right on the mark. So uh, I like that, if you can see those. Um, we're going to uh, drill those out, and we're going to do the same with the uh, right-hand side. And uh, then we'll mount this up and uh, show you what it looks like. Okay, so now we have all uh, all six holes are drilled into the bearing blocks, and uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, mount mount it to the frame and put the motors in place and see what it all looks like. So let me get to that. All right, well here's how they look after they're mounted. You can see they're on there pretty nicely. Three screws up there, right up there, same down here, just like that. Holding them, they're on there really, really, really solid. Nope, those things are not moving at all. So uh, I'm going to mount the motors up see what things look like with the mount motors and wheels and show you that in a few minutes here so uh i've got the uh, brackets in place and the uh bearing blocks i was trying to mount this motor i found something interesting there's no way of getting this past the uh thing with uh, everything in place so uh either i either i have to uh do the uh, bearing bearing blocks first or last or take these out something like that but uh, yeah it's not making it easy things you find out rule of fabrication again all right so there we have it motors mounted everything's in place Didn't take too long. <laughs> oh, yeah. And these bearing blocks. Nice thing about HDPE, it's uh, self lubricating. So, uh, you know, they're kind of like, uh, they're kind of like, uh, oh, I don't know, bearings you don't really have to take care, take much care of. You know, they, they'll wear, but uh, hey, cutting board's cheap. So, uh, all I got left to do now, well, few things I want to do but what I'm gonna what I what I what I what I am gonna do first is I'm gonna drill some holes back behind the connectors um, in order to put a couple grommets in for the uh, later later on uh, putting wires through and whatnot for the uh, for the motors um, and then uh, then I need to figure out a way to uh, get the uh, get the uh, casters mounted because uh, they're actually a little bit too short. Um, they need to be raised up a little bit or lowered or however you want to so that they're level with the uh, rear wheels.